Hi, this is Ty Pan for Shanzai.com and uh, we're here again today back in the studio looking at the APAD D9. Now the APAD D9 is an interesting tablet because it's actually uh, a 10.1 inch size device but it comes in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio so while it's the same size uh, theoretically as an iPad in a 10.1 inch sort of size frame it's got a, a little bit different uh, shape and feel as you'll see in a few minutes and maybe you can already tell from the box here on the outside. Now the box itself uh, is going back to some of the more typical uh, Shanzai boxing that we've seen. For some reason it says 2.1 and 2.2 on the outside here. I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, definitely on our tests uh, it looks like it's a, an Android 2.2 device. We're putting it up inside we get the actual tablet itself. There it is, again, kind of an interesting device, a little bit longer than it is uh, wider, obviously, with the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Also in the box here is just a few other little items uh, that you'll need, and that is your USB to a mini USB connection. Uh, there's also a, uh, a power connection here for your power supply, which is, comes interesting with a European connection on the end, but they've also included, at least for us for in the demo, a uh, an adapter so that you can plug that into uh, other Western style plug in options. So you plug your device in like so. So uh, let's take a look at the actual uh, APAD uh, D9 device. Uh, let's walk through. We've got uh, on the front face here your 16 by 9 aspect ratio, as we mentioned. Also, it's a, a resistive touchscreen. It's not a capacitive touchscreen, but actually it, we found through our uses, and I'll show you a little bit later, it's actually kind of one of the better quality ones. We've seen some really bad ones, but uh, this one's not too bad at all. Uh, it's got the typical black uh, framing of the actual screen area, and then along the bottom or the side or the top or whichever orientation you have your particular uh, tablet, we've got a, some menu items. And one of these, or sorry, some uh, controls for A, your menu, which is that particular uh, icon there, your home, your back, and then search. Those are your typical when there are four buttons that you'll find on an Android uh, device. Um, if you look really closely though here, it might not show up so well on camera, you'll see that there's also a hole here for the camera. Now, this is one of the mysteries of this particular review we're doing is inside of this camera, if you can see it, uh, probably not so well there uh, on the video, but actually there's nothing inside there. I can see looking straight into there the back of the uh, plate of the device, which is white. There's no camera in there and using the camera software later we found out that actually there, there is no camera. So make sure if you're buying that, the specs include uh, a camera and that you can get that because I think that's one of the key things to have on a device like this, especially if it's advertised. Uh, if you look along the bottom side of the device, you'll see that it's actually uh, a reasonably thin device with a beveled curved edge. It's also got the half white and the half black, which I think even makes it look a little bit thinner by having the two different colors. Uh, the back of the device is sort of uh, an iPod white type of uh, nice, uh, smooth piano finish uh, plastic. And there is also some uh, uh, slits in the plastic here for your audio out. Again, nothing along the other uh, back side of the device really to speak of. Uh, along the bottom side of the device, you can see there's nothing until you get to the, uh, the right uh, corner here. And there's a volume up and down rocker switch there. And there's also an additional button which uh, performs the home function. So pressing that takes you back home as well. So you've got that on the front side of the, of the device here, pressing home. On the top of the device, pressing home. Even over here on the actual screen interface of Android, you can get yourself home. So there's plenty of options to get home. Now here's the important I.O. side of the device. Uh, if you can see, again, I'm not sure how well that shows up on video, but there's a tiny little square that's not quite flush with the actual side of the device, and that square is the power button. Holding that down for a few moments will power up your device. Next to that is your power supply connection, so you plug in your power supply there. Of course, there's a USB connection here, which is great to have a full-size normal USB connection, but there's also a mini USB connection as well, so you can use either size of cable. Also, what you might not be able to see here is the tiny little bump of where I've actually added in the SD card for our test content that we've got added. So that's where you put your SD card in. There's no cover or anything over that, but it actually fits pretty flush and we haven't had seen any problems or with having uh, that implementation. And then even just on the other side here is another slot that's not being in use yet, 
but is optional is for a 3G connection. So if you've got a SIM card that you want to use with your device and you've got a 3G account so you can connect them, supposedly that'll be working. Now we haven't tested that so I won't be able to, to let you know how well that goes, but I think you can make sure if you're A9, some of them do have, I believe, the 3G option. Uh, down here further we've got a microphone and a headphone jack uh, connections for your device and you can see tiny little screws along here as well for connecting the case to it. That's pretty much it from the hardware side of things. There's not much else going on the device. It's quite simple that, in that sense. Um, one of the things that maybe you can note while we're uh, looking at it is that I've been holding it this way. It seems kind of intuitive to have the, the for me as a right-handed person to have the, uh, the menu items here, but it does have a very responsive full 360 G sensor uh, set up. So depending on how you want to hold the device and whatever orientation you want, it will uh, manage that quite well. Uh, transitions and uh, movement. We've reviewed products with the 800 megahertz uh, Freescale processor that runs this device before. So actually making things happen on the device is very snappy and smooth. That's really impressive. As we mentioned, the, the camera function there, when you flip it on, there is no camera, so that, that doesn't work. You'll also see there's plenty of things loaded here on the demo device, but uh, key among those, of course, is your G applications. Google stuff, including uh, Gmail, your market here, we've got places. Um, this one's got Skype loaded on it as well, YouTube, pretty much uh, quite a bit of the Google's goodness on there, so that's nice for people who want to connect and down more applications easily from the Android market. So with choices now in the marketplace for including the Barnes & Noble Nook now coming out at a cheap price and it's a basically a color Android device but also an ebook reader, we thought we'd take a look at our good old friend Aldalco here on the device and see if we can uh, enjoy any reading and catching up on our uh, uh, Art of War. There we go. Now as you can tell, Let's dismiss some of their notifications. I've already been reading. I'm way ahead there. I know everything there is to know about war pretty much. Uh, tapping the device very quickly, transitions through the page things. It's nice. You know, I don't know if you guys remember, but even up to two years ago, ebook readers, you'd be pressing and waiting for the pages to turn, but that isn't the case. You'll probably want to hold it in some kind of version of portrait mode though, and uh, get more information on the page see that that works well. There seems to be a little bit of a stutter as it goes from chapter to chapter, but page to page is incredibly smooth. So that's nice. For fans of the Dolk will enjoy that. Now let's getting back, let's do a quick look at video. Now we've seen the 800 megahertz Freescale processor before. It has the typical performance that we've expected. One of the things if you can remember from that is, means that it also can play an MKV file. So we've got our uh, our demo file that we've got here for the Manchester United Liverpool game. I think you guys have seen us show that before. Let's bring that up quickly and get you a, a look at uh, of that. Oops. There we are. Let's flip it over. Looks like it's not detecting the G sensor while it's in video mode there. But as you can see, the performance is smooth on the MKV file format. Picture quality is good. Uh, the screen's pretty bright and whatnot. You can probably see my face in the reflection. But uh, actually, overall, the screen brightness and quality is good. The viewing angle, somebody was asking me a little bit about that as well. It seems quite impressive. Um, yeah, I, I think those you won't be unhappy with those. You're not going to be that far away from your tablet in the first place. And let's take a look at some gaming for a moment here. Uh, I know we always do Angry Birds, so today I'm going to do Fruit Slice just for the fun of it. And also, I'll try to get you some idea about the uh, the volume, and so you can hear some of the audio in Fruit Slice. Although, to be fair, Fruit Slice has very uh, annoying uh, audio. But anyway, let's let's sort of play a classic game of Fruit Slice. For those of you who remember, object is to slice the fruit as they pop up without slicing the. Uh, Bombs there. You slice the bomb and your game's over immediately. Let's get those. You can see, maybe also gives you some idea about how well the screen performs. Ah, oh, my turn is over. No, actually the screen is very responsive. It definitely is one of the better resistive screens. The colors here are looking nice and good. 
Uh, you can see the game in this particular case, and also the same with Angry Birds. They both format really nice to the large 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen. Some games won't though. Some games will still format and only show up and use a small part of the space because they were designed for phones. Up. So that basically wraps it up for the D-pad A9, at least here for the video. Remember, we do the full written review on the site and we're trying to add more information on the uh, written review so you can see things like the benchmark score and a few of the other items that we don't have time to show you here on the actual video itself. Um, to conclude, we see the price is about US dollars, $229. Uh, dollars. So it's in that range now that we're starting to see sort of the typical, slightly better performing tablets. Uh, but creeping up there again, close to things like the, the Nook and some of the other cheaper, uh, more bigger branded tablets. So that's kind of a, an option for you to consider. Uh, I think one of the things that you can tell from the device is it's a unique shape. I think what it comes down to, for a person who's familiar with this type of processing power with the Freescale processor, and they're looking at a device so above that performance level, they're going to come down to deciding, do you like the shape of the device? Do you want something that's bigger and do you like the 16 by 9 aspect ratio? If you're looking for those type of qualities in the tablet, 